Hello everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing my top 10 favorite effects in Adobe Premiere Pro. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, leave a like below, and follow me on social media at Justin Odisho, and let's get started. So a quick note, I'm going to be working in the effects panel this whole time, specifically in the video effects folders. If you don't see or know where this panel is, you can always find it under window and it's in the effects panel. It should be here by default. I'm just using the default workspace. Also, I'm in the latest version of Adobe Premiere Pro CC, so if you don't have all of these effects in your version, you might perhaps be using an older version. And also, lastly, all 10 of these effects, they're not really in a specific particular order. I'm just kind of ranking them from least to most fun to play around with and my favorites to play around with and I've basically done a video on all of them individually. If you go to my channel homepage, click the search icon and type in keywords like glitch, warp, etc. You'll find a plethora of videos on every single effect separately. So I'm not going to be going too in depth on all of these. I hope for this video to just give you a fun little sampling of a few different effects to familiarize yourself with if you didn't know they were there. And let's get started. So number 10 on the list, this one is found in the distort folder. And it's actually not a distortion, it's a fix of a distortion. It's called warp stabilizer. So this will kind of take your shaky clips, for example, I've got a bit of shakiness here maybe I was moving around and walking at the same time as shooting this and I can click and drag this onto this video clip it'll analyze in the background for a little bit kind of render each frame out and I can make it more smooth if not no motion at all if I want it to be more like a tripod shot so I have a full separate video on this that goes much more in depth this doesn't work on every single clip However, it can be a great tool to stabilize certain shots, but you want to be careful not to get that jello-like movement. It also crops in a little bit. It's ranking in lower on the list for me just because it's not that fun. It's just functional, but still a great functional effect. Number nine on the list, this is a super functional one. It can be fun, but it's not that fun. It's just kind of functional. This is in the blur section, and this is the Gaussian blur. Basically, it's a staple in almost any editing software. And what this does is just Gaussian is uh, named after a mathematician, I believe. And it just allows you to blur your image. It can be very useful if you're trying to pull focus artificially to place text or whatever over, or just for abstract blending. If you don't want that little vignetting that happens on the edges, you can repeat edge pixels. And you can choose to blur horizontally or vertically. So this can be fun, this can be functional, you can keyframe it. Blur is definitely a staple, can't go without it. It's definitely in the top 10 of effects in my opinion. But let's move on to effect number eight on the list and that will be the crop effect. You should find this under the transform folder and this is just a super functional effect. Uh, you can use it to crop things out, perhaps if you're doing like a split screen or if you're doing some sort of masking effects and you don't want certain things to be shown or in the clip. Crop is a very functional effect. If you can make it fun if you want. It can be fun to stack layers and compositions with different crops. But first and foremost, it's like a functional crop or masking effect that you can do. There's all different kind of uses, especially when you start keyframing things. And some, sometimes people will use this for an artificial widescreen bar look if you just crop the top and bottom. It's not real widescreen. But anyways, that's the crop effect. Very good to know. I'm always going back to it. And it's, it's like a handy tool. Got to be in the tool bin. Moving on to number seven. This one's actually found in the channel folder. And that is invert. So at the surface, invert is that classic inversion color effect which can just kind of flip the RGB channels, give you a trippy color look. However, in Premiere Pro, you got an option to flip not only the RGB, but just the red, green, blue, whatever color channels. And you can also adjust the blend and strength of them, which can be kind of cool. But not only can this be a creative effect, it's actually a functional effect as well. Let's say I'm working with white text or any color text for that matter, 
and I want to find the exact inversion or opposite of it. Instead of flipping it to black or whatever, I can set the invert effect on there and it'll give me the opposite color. This can be great for working with animations or uh, symmetrical compositions when it comes to color. So think about it, it's not only a creative effect, it's also a very functional effect when you need to find the exact opposite of a certain color. Moving on, effect number six, and it kind of goes hand in hand with that whole creative color section. You can find this one in the color correction folder, and that is tint. This one made it to the list just because it's a pretty fun effect. It's kind of like the gradient map effect, which is hard to do in Premiere, but this effect makes it possible. Basically, you can map black to a certain color and white to a certain color, essentially giving you a gradient map type of effect. So I can make the black one color, let's say dark green, and I can make the whites or highlights another color, let's say bright blue. And this might be familiar to you with for kind of like a Spotify advertisement effect or it's another way to do black and white if you want you can do black on the blacks and white to white you can also blend it to adjust the strength but it's a fun little color correction effect it's kind of falling right in the middle here because it's not super functional it's not super fun but it's a little bit of both and it's just a fun effect to know next up on the list coming in at number five is ultra key. So if you're not familiar with ultra key, think of kind of like green screening. I'm sure you're familiar with green screening. This allows you to apply the ultra key effect onto any clip, pick a certain color to key out. So let's say red and make that key color something else. So you can just composite alpha channel color channel. It looks kind of weird right now, but let's say you're working with a green screen. It would allow you to remove that color from the clip. So in this case, let's say I put this over that firework clip from earlier. What you get is this cool composition because I've keyed out the reds and so only what's underneath is showing through. And that's a really cool blend. Traditionally, you'd use this for let's say green screens if you really wanted to put a clean cut background on there. Next up on the list, very similar to Ultra Key, is the luma key and notice i can also search all these effects in the search bar on the top if i don't know what folder they're in but these are all in the keying folder which is a very useful one and like all the other keys this allows you to select and mask out a certain part of the image based on a certain attributes so luma it's probably latin or something it basically allows you to show or hide portions of the image based on how bright or dark it is so the threshold and the cutoff i can make all the highlights disappear or I can make all the shadows disappear and show through. So this can be really good to do things like sky replacement or rough replacements of highlights or shadow fills. And again, it, look, it looks black right now, that's because nothing's underneath, but if I was to put this clip over another clip, the stuff that's underneath would show. So it's a, it's a bit harsh in this case because the cutoff is high, but there's lots of cool creative applications that you could do with this as well as functional applications. So next up on the list, number three spots, just cause it's super fun to play around with is the echo effect. So if I go here to echo and it's in the time video effects folder and click and drag it on the clip, it basically creates a copy or duplication based on a certain time delay and you can change the number of echoes and the amount of delay. So if there's someone moving or the camera's going, it creates a cool motion trail effect almost. And you can adjust the way that it blends. So different blending modes do different things. And you can also adjust the decay and starting intensity. So the echoes can get weaker over time as you set the strength to be different things. It can look really cool with people performing. So if I added an echo on this clip from earlier, maybe did two or three, you can see each time his hand moves or he moves and walks a little bit, it creates a really cool motion trail. This is a bit taxing, it's heavy, so you can always press I and O to create in and out start points and press enter to render a preview. That's what this red bar means. It doesn't mean anything's wrong. It just means that 
you're not going to get a smooth preview because this part needs to buffer. It's pretty heavy. Yellow means you might get okay preview. Green means you're going to get a smooth preview. Also, another thing you can do is always lower the preview quality instead of full. You can make it like half or a quarter if you're willing to look at it in less quality just to see if the animation works smoothly. But man, this looks really cool actually. The echo mixed with the keying mixed with the fireworks underneath. That looks like it could be out of a music video or something. So that's the echo effect. It's getting less functional here, but more fun. Number two spot. I don't know why it's number two. I didn't look, I didn't really consider these rankings too much. So don't pin me to them. But this is the strobe effect. You can find this in the stylized video folder because it can add some stylization to your clip. But the strobe light effect is just what it says. It's a strobe light. So by default, it adds a white flashing strobe at half a second on and half a second off. But the adjustments are pretty endless here. You got infinite possibilities because you can adjust it to not only add a white, you can make it the layer transparent. So instead of adding white, you can make it blink every half a second, thus creating that classic strobe without having to cut the clip too much. Also notice with any effects, you can stack them on top of each other. Like I have the strobe on this clip that was tinted earlier. And I can also adjust the strobe duration. So instead of every half a second, I can make it go five times a second. So now you get much more crazy flashes. If I were to put this over another clip, then you'd get the other clip flashing in between. And you get the deal there. This one's just fun to play with careful seizure warning there it can get kind of hectic last but not least if you're a fan of my channel you've probably seen me resort to this effect in all kinds of videos to create different glitches and different things and that is the wave warp effect you can find this in the distort video folder same place the warp stabilizer was but this is probably just the most fun effect for me to play around with because it's based on math almost. This is, uh, it adds a wave animation and distortion to your clip. And by default, it looks kind of crappy and you get these weird black lines, but there's a few things you can do to make it look super cool. You can pin the edges, all edges. So stretches that out cleaner and you can increase the wave height, the wave width, the direction, the type of wave and it's just fun to play around with this and see what type of creative distorted glitches you can create. It might not be the most useful but to me it's fun because not many other effects in Premiere Pro have built-in movement and animation in them without having to keyframe. So that's why this one's so unique and fun to me. But that's been 10 different effects in Adobe Premiere Pro. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely leave a like on it below. Let me know which effects are your favorite in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed. Definitely follow me on social media at Justin Odisha on Instagram and Twitter if you want to connect and reach out to me. And make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.